I wonder if you could tell me more about your controlled folly, I said. Please tell me, Don Juan, what exactly is controlled folly? I am happy that you finally asked me about my controlled folly after so many years, and yet it wouldn't have mattered to me in the least if you have never asked. Yet I have chosen to feel happy, as if I cared that you asked, as if it would matter that I care. That is controlled folly. We both laughed very loudly. With whom do you exercise control folly, Don Juan? I asked after a long silence. He chuckled. With everybody, he exclaimed, smiling. When do you choose to exercise it, then? Every single time I act. I felt I needed to recapitulate at that point and ask him if controlled folly meant that his acts were never sincere, but were only the acts of an actor. My acts are sincere, he said, but they are only acts of an actor. Then everything you do must be controlled folly, I said, truly surprised. Yes, everything. But it can't be true, I protested, that every one of your acts is only controlled folly? Why not? He replied with a mysterious look. That would mean that nothing matters to you and you don't really care about anything or anybody. Take me, for example. Do you mean that you don't care whether I become a man of knowledge or whether I live or die or do anything? True. I don't. You're like Lucio or everybody else in my life. My controlled folly. I experienced a peculiar feeling of emptiness. Obviously, there was no reason in the world why Don Juan had to care about me. But on the other hand, I had almost a certainty that he cared about me personally. I thought it could not be otherwise, since he always gave me his undivided attention during every moment I would ever spent with him. It occurred to me that perhaps Don Juan was just saying that because he was annoyed with me. After all, I had quit his teachings. I don't think it's possible to go on living if nothing really matters to us, Don Juan. That applies to you, he said. Things matter to you. You asked me about my controlled folly, and I told you that everything I do in regard to myself and my fellow men is folly, because nothing matters. My point is, Don Juan, that if nothing matters to you, how can you go on living? Perhaps it's not possible to explain, he said. Certain things in your life matter to you because they're important. Your acts are certainly important to you. But for me, not a single thing is important any longer. Neither my acts, nor the acts of any of my fellow men. I go on living, though, because I have my will. Because I have tempered my will throughout my life until it's neat and wholesome, and now it doesn't matter to me that nothing matters. My will controls the folly of my life. I told him that in my opinion... Some of the acts of my fellow men were of supreme importance. You believe that because you are thinking. You're thinking about life, Don Juan said with a glint in his eye. You're not seeing. Would I feel differently if I could see? I asked. Once a man learns to see, he finds himself alone in the world with nothing but folly, Don Juan said cryptically. He paused for a moment and looked at me as if he wanted to judge the effects of his words. Your acts as well as the acts of your fellow men in general, appear to be important to you because you have learned to think they are important. He used the word learned with such a peculiar inflection that it forced me to ask what he meant by it. He stopped handling his plants and looked at me. We look at ourselves already thinking that we are important, and therefore we've got to feel important. But then when a man learns to see, he realizes that he can no longer think about the things he looks at, and if he cannot think about what he looks at, everything becomes unimportant. Don Juan seemed to notice my fatigue and patted me gently. Clean these plants here, he said, and then shred them carefully into this jar. He handed me a large coffee jar and left. 